Welcome to this overview and demonstration of data synchronization capabilities in Couchbase Mobile. To start, let's look at the Couchbase Mobile product stack. This is the stack that enables offline-first mobile and edge applications. On the left, we have Couchbase Server, which is our flagship modern database server with support for SQL, analytics, full-text search, and eventing. Then on the right, we have Couchbase Lite, which is the embeddable version of Couchbase for mobile and custom embedded devices. Sync Gateway sits in between and is responsible for secure data sync, routing, and access control between mobile clients and server tiers. These capabilities can be deployed two ways. Fully managed with Couchbase Capella, or self-managed where customers install Couchbase themselves on public or private clouds, on a cloud edge service, or on-premises. Sync Gateway is built specifically for synchronizing data and providing authorization and authentication for large-scale mobile and IoT applications. First and foremost, Sync Gateway provides cloud-to-edge sync. This is the ability to synchronize data using a WebSockets-based protocol between Couchbase in the cloud and devices running Couchbase Lite, as well as between individual Sync Gateway deployments, including app services, the hosted and managed deployment of Sync Gateway on Couchbase Capella. Sync features include Delta Sync for bandwidth efficiency and automatic customizable conflict resolution, which is critical for large scale multi user applications. Sync Gateway also provides REST APIs that allow web clients to access sync data, as well as administrative APIs for working with deployment configurations and monitoring performance and event statistics. Access control is fine grained with channels for data segregation, read access control at the document level, and write access control at the field level. And for security, Sync Gateway handles user authentication and over-the-wire TLS encryption for edge devices, REST endpoints, and web clients. For this demonstration, we will focus on inter-Sync Gateway replication, which is the ability to sync data between Sync Gateway deployments and a multi-tier edge topology. The ability to replicate data between Sync Gateway deployments is a significant differentiator for Couchbase as it enables complex edge topologies that can be many levels deep and meet nearly any requirement for availability and low latency. Inter-Sync Gateway replication is bi-directional, restarts automatically, and is designed to support deployments of up to thousands of edge nodes. The Sync Gateway access control model is fine-grained and comprised of documents, users, channels, and roles. The channel concept is core to the model. Every document in the database belongs to a set of channels, and every user is authorized to access a set of channels, providing comprehensive control over data access. Once a document is created, it is assigned to one or more channels, and users can only access documents and channels that they have been granted access to. Roles are assigned to users, and by doing so, the user inherits all channel access granted to those roles. This control can be changed at any time, as well as revoked, to prevent improper access. In this Sync Gateway Access Control example, there are two edges, Edge 1 and Edge 2. We also have three channels, two private and one shared. Documents for Edge 1 are in Channel 1, and documents for Edge 2 are in Channel 2. Both channels are private and can only be accessed by the edges assigned to access them. But in the shared channel, both edges can access the documents. The ability to provide specific levels of access to specific users and roles is one of the ways that Sync Gateway enables highly secure applications. Access assignments are made in the Sync Gateway configuration file within the Sync function. Also, users need to be provided access to a given channel or group of channels via the admin channel's configuration setting during user creation or via updates to the sync function. Once users have been granted access to channels, you use the JavaScript-based sync function to ensure that channel permissions are followed to allow or reject access. Now let's hear from Wayne Carter, VP of Engineering at Couchbase, who will show a live demonstration of Couchbase Mobile synchronization in action. I'm going to demonstrate how to set up an edge topology for managing passenger information on cruise ships. And to do that, I'm going to set up this architecture. So I'm going to set up data centers in the east and west, and then I'm going to set up data centers on these two cruise ships, the Pacific and the Atlantic. Now for the demo, I'm going to actually deploy everything on my development um, environment, but in production, you would just deploy these instead of on your laptop, you just deploy them into the cloud and edge locations. 
And then I'm going to demonstrate how you can have the data for individual voyages be synchronized onto ships and then have that data change when the voyage number for the ship changes. So the first thing you'll see here is you'll see that customer information for passengers that are on voyage one are on the ship that they are the passenger for. So you can see that Pacific passengers that are on voyage one are on the Pacific ship and then passenger information for the Atlantic on Voyage 1 or on the Atlantic. And then I'm going to update the voyage number that the ship is processing, and the Voyage 1 data will leave the ship, and the Voyage 2 data will um, synchronize onto the ship. So let's get started with this. So we need to set up this topology, and the first thing we'll do is set up the Couchbase server clusters for each of these, or the buckets for each of these. I'm going to do it here. All right. Setting the memory low for this demo since it's small. All right, now I have buckets for each of my data centers East, West, Pacific, and Atlantic. Perfect, they're all running. All right, let's keep going. So now we're gonna set up the gateways. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm, when I launch the gateways, I'm gonna run them in this terminal. So I'm gonna go ahead and start the east one using start gateway in the east directory, and then we're gonna look at what that, how that was done. So I'm gonna show you all of the config for the gateways here in my IDE. So let's go into the east. We started sync gateway um, using the sync gateway.sh file, and you can see that it's just targeting the binary, the sync gateway binary that's sitting next to it, and passing in the config that's also sitting next to it. So let's look at the config file. All right, so starting at the top, you can see that this gateway is connected to the east bucket. That's the one we just created and the correct one for this location. It also has a number of users. The admin user is going to be used for our demo scripts that we're going to be running, so I'll show you that later. And then we have users for the West, Atlantic, and Pacific data centers. So these data centers are connected using synchronization and those, that synchronization requires authentication and that's what these users are used for. And you can see that the Atlantic and Pacific users are also granted access to their corresponding channels, which means that data that is put into those channels are what's going to sync to those individual users or ships. And then I've also got some roles set up because I'm going to use this role functionality for moving the ship from voyage, from voyage to voyage. And when that happens, the data will get um, moved and synchronized both on and off of the ship as appropriate, depending on the voyage number. And then you can see that when they're granted those, each of those roles is grant, granted a channel that corresponds to the name of the role. So Atlantic Voyage 1, Atlantic Voyage 2, Pacific Voyage 1 and 2. And then as data flows through the system, so anytime a data uh, document is mutated, it flows through the sync function. In the sync function, you can do a lot of security. You can do all of the security granting. And this is where we do those things. So when a ship document is written, we grant the ship um, the role for its current voyage. So if the doc says that the voyage number is one, then it will get granted the Atlantic Voyage 1 um, role. When a customer so a customer profile is written to the system. We channel that to the user's channel. So every user is able to read their own profile. And so they're given access to the channel of their own name. So a channel per user. Then when a booking is created, this is where we, where we actually know that the customer is on a voyage. They produce a booking, right? And so when that happens, we route the booking to the ship's voyage channel. So depending on the voyage number, it will get routed to that channel. So in this case, this example, it's Atlantic Voyage 1. And then um, secondly, we grant the ship's voyage role access to the customer's channel. So now we're saying that Atlantic Voyage 1 has access to customer 1 data. That will allow it to, to synchronize the data for the customer onto the ship itself. All right, so let's go ahead and start up the West. I'm going to start the West data center. I'm going to go ahead and kick off this script and then we'll look at the config file. All right, looking at the config file, it's set up very similarly. It's connecting to the West bucket. It has the admin user for um, 
for the demo scripts that we're going to be using. And then it has an Atlantic and Pacific user that is used for synchronizing between the data centers in the ships. So when we turn on the sync gateways in the Pacific and Atlantic, they need to be able to connect and authenticate with the West and East. So we have those users defined in both the West and the East. We have the same roles as we had in the East. And we also have the same channel function as we had in the East. It's just missing the comments. That's why it looks a little bit different. And then lastly, what we didn't have in the East is we didn't have a replicator. It's because the West is acting as the active participant in replication for the cloud. So this red line between the East and the West, that's this replicator here. And you can see that it's connecting to 4984. So each of these gateways is running on their own port. And the East is running on 4984. You can see the West is running on 5984. And then it's connecting as itself the West region. Now that synchronization is going to use the user and all of its access grants to determine what comes, what is synchronized to the West. All right, let's move forward and set up the Atlantic uh, cruise ship. So we'll kick off this script. Close these. Open the Atlantic. All right, so the Atlantic is connecting to the Atlantic bucket. It has the admin uh, user for our scripts. It also has an employee set up with a crew role, and they're given access to bookings in this role. And when a booking document comes through this sync channel, which just happens during sync also, right, not just during write, then we channel the document to bookings. That means that any employee, so if we look at this line here, right, this, this employee device has a Couchbase light in it, and it's synchronizing with the gateway, it's going to log in as employee one, and then employee one is going to be able to sync down all the bookings so that they have access to those. And then the replication setup are for the east and west. Right? So we have two replications here, and they represent the two. Those are for the, the two lines. The Atlantic ship is going to synchronize with the east and with the west. So you can see it's 4984 for the east, 5984 for the west, so the correct ports, and it's logging in as itself. All right, so that's done. Let's move forward and set up the Pacific. And you can see that the Atlantic is running on 6984. All right, kick that off. Let's look at the config for the Pacific. All right, so the Pacific is connected to the Pacific bucket. It has the admin user for our scripts. It has a second employee with a, with a role crew, and they have access to bookings. And then when bookings flow through the sync function, we uh, give them, um, we channel those to the bookings channel, which means that the employees on Pacific will now have access to bookings um, or crew. And then we have the replication set up for these two lines here. So this line to the east and this line to the west. And you can see that they're logging in. So that's 4984 to the east, 5984 to the west, and logging in as Pacific. All right, so our entire system is set up. Let's move forward to the demo. Okay, so for the demo, we'll be going through these four scripts. The first script will be creating the ships. So we're gonna be connecting to the east. We're gonna be creating a couple of ship docks, the Atlantic, the Atlantic, and the Pacific, and we're gonna have them as an initial value of voyage one. So these are the things we need to watch, voyage numbers. All right, so let's go ahead and kick that off. Now the ship should only be, the ship documents that we just created should only be in the east and west. They shouldn't be on the Pacific and Atlantic because we didn't channel them there. So let's look and see that they're there. Okay. All right, so here they are, ship one and two for the Atlantic and the Pacific. Go to the west. We have ship one and two for the Atlantic Pacific there too. If we look on the Atlantic, we're not sending that document to the ship, so it's not there. And on Pacific, the same thing. All right, so all of that worked correctly. All the data is where it's supposed to be, so let's move forward. 
All right, so now we're gonna create the customers. So we're gonna create customers one through five. We're gonna put those in the east. And we're gonna look that they synchronize to the east and west. All right, we won't see them on the Pacific. I'll go ahead and refresh that here. You can see that we see no passengers because we don't have any bookings yet. And we'll look at the Atlantic. We shouldn't have any passengers there either. We don't because we don't have any bookings yet. In the east, we should have all of that. So all of the customers went through five, there they are. And then west, all of the customers, there they are. Okay, so there all the data is where it needs to be. All right, let's move forward. Okay, for this one, we're gonna be adding the bookings. So we're gonna create six bookings. They're going to be targeted at multiple voyages. So we have the first two are targeted at voyage one on the Atlantic. The third one is, is targeted at voyage one on the Pacific. And then we have the, the fourth and fifth are targeted at the Pacific voyage two. And then the sixth is targeted at the Atlantic voyage two. So let's go ahead and run that. And so we're on voyage one, the ship is all on voyage one. So we're going to only see the voyage one data on the individual ships. And we're gonna see the voyage one and voyage two data in the east and west. Let's do that. Okay, here are all my bookings, one through six in the west. One through, here are my bookings one through six in the east. Let's go down to the Atlantic. The Atlantic has bookings one and two, which are for customer one and two on voyage one. We can validate that here. Atlantic is the top two born booking one and two. All right, and then go to the Pacific. We can see the bookings data here is for the Pacific Voyage 1, and then where's my other booking? Oh, only one here. Perfect. All the data is where it's supposed to be. All right. Now let's go to the last one where we're going to change the voyage number. So we'll look at what we're going to do here. So in this case, what we're doing is we're changing the voyage number of the ship. So we're taking the Atlantic ship, you can see this is a ship dock here, and we're changing the voyage number to two on both of these ships. And so we'll see that the voyage one data leaves the ship and the voyage two data goes on the ship, and then the east and west have all of the voyage, all of the customer and voyage and booking data in both of those locations. All right, let's go over here. We'll start in the east. All right, so we can see that the Pacific and the Atlantic are now on voyage two. You can see that here and here. And that's correct. And we have all of the bookings and all of the customers. On the west, we have the same thing. The Atlantic is on voyage two. Pacific is on voyage two. And we have all of the bookings and all of the customers. Now we go to the Atlantic. And the Atlantic has only booking six for customer five, which is for the Atlantic Voyage 2. That's correct. You also see the customer data here. That's correct. And let's look at the Pacific. In the Pacific, we have the bookings for both Voyage for Voyage 2, and then we have the customer profiles for these two customers. So all the data is where it needs to be. All right, so that's it. Couchbase brings the ability to securely and efficiently sync data between the cloud and the edge, enabling multi-tiered edge architectures that provide the highest guarantees of speed and availability for mission-critical applications.